Hi, I'm Johnny. For those of you who don't know me, I've been coming to St. Barnabas for about two and a half years as part of the French Connect service. And today I wanted to share a couple of thoughts I've uh, been having as I've been reflecting on the story of Abraham. Uh, so when we first meet Abraham in Genesis, um, it's at the end of this long genealogy that goes from Noah right up to him. Um, and I'm going to read the introductory verses in uh, chapter, Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. It says, Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The questions that come out from this short passage for me are, one, why did they leave Ur? And two, why did they stop in Haran? And I think we can find some of the answers in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 7 is when Stephen, the first martyr, is defending himself before the high priest and he gives his whole history of the Israelites and this is what he has to say about Abram. Brothers and fathers hear me the God of glory appeared to your father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and said to him go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran and after his father died God removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. So what it sounds like is that Abram was living in this place called Ur, a big city, a capital, a capital city of an empire at the time. And God appears to him and says, go out, I'm going to show you where to go. And he goes out with his family and they think that what uh, God is saying is go to Canaan. And that's where they're trying to get to. But when they get to Haran, they stop. Um, I don't really know why, but some of the things I've been thinking about is it could be that um, they just got tired you know, Tara, Abram's dad was there. He was pretty old at the time. Or it could be that they got pretty comfortable. Culturally, Haran and Ur, they were both big cities, centers of trade, maybe felt quite similar. Um, or it could be that they were lost. In one of the languages at the time, Haran actually means crossroads because that area was a place where all the roads met to the various different parts of, of the Middle East. And it could be they didn't know where to go next. It made me think a bit of, of how it can feel during COVID times. I've been thinking about what God might be calling me to do, what he might want me to do next. And the answer at the moment is there's not all that much I can do except stay inside, keep other people safe. And it can be really frustrating. Um, and I guess uh, I'm imagining that maybe Abram felt the same. You know, God's called me to do these things and I'm stuck here instead of where I think I'm supposed to be, what's going on. The good news is that God doesn't leave Abram there because in the next chapter, Genesis chapter 12, um, this is what it says. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going towards the Negev. A couple of points jump out to me here. Obviously, when God appears, he says, go. He gives a bit of oomph to get Abraham moving again. Doesn't provide all that many more directions, if I'm being honest, but gives enough for Abraham to step out. And when he is where God wants him to be, God says, this is where you're supposed to be. Um, but what's really cool is that God has actually been using Abraham's time in Haran to prepare him for this. The new life he's being called to is, uh, it's the life of a nomad. It's very different from being in the city. But even so, even when Abram is in Haran, he gets all these people and all these possessions that can help him on this next stage. So God's been preparing him, even though it's felt like a dry period, it's been really fruitful. And the other thing is that when God speaks to Abram, Abram's response is to build an altar um, to remember the event. And he does that at successive stages. When God says, I'll give you this land, he builds an altar. And when he moves on to the next stage, he builds an altar. And I really love the last verse, verse nine. Abram journeyed on, still going towards the Negev. The reason I love that is it sounds like what Abram's doing is he's building an altar to remember how faithful God has been in the past. Uh, and he's using that to, to bolster his faith, to keep trusting God for the next step. So even if God doesn't give him the whole picture all at once, Abram is able to look back and see how God has been faithful um, in Haran, at Bethel, and in all these other places. And in so doing, has the courage to keep going and trusting God one step at a time. So when you're in Haran, God has a plan. 
And our job is to trust him one step at a time every day. So I'm just going to pray for us quickly. Dear God, thank you that you're the author of our lives and you guide our steps. I pray that you'd be giving us the, the faith to trust in you um, and to follow you step by step. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.